All right. Well, I, uh, I want to first of all start off by, by, uh, by saying that uh, uh, obviously taking on an opponent uh, that we just took on and um, giving them credit. They've been at the top of college football over the last two years and they've played exceptionally well. Their, their staff has done a great job. And, um, and, and, and I, knew, I knew that we were in for a war. I knew we were in for a battle. And, um, but I will say this. There's 111 guys in that locker room over there. There's about 35 staff members that we have. And um, while this might, this might have shocked a, a, a lot of people and it shocked the country, it didn't shock those guys and our staff. And uh, this is something that we've been, we've been working for, we've been working toward. Um, this has been a, a building process and building from the ground floor up, as I've said many, many times. And it's a, it, it truly is a one day at a time mentality. Um, and um, for us to, to come in I'm, I'm, and get a win, a signature win like this uh, is, is huge. Um, and, and as I shared with our players for the last two weeks, it just takes one to start a revolution. It just takes one win to put some, one win to put some wind in our sails. Uh, when we came off the field against Tulsa, that was as hurt a locker room as I've ever been a part of. And um, for two weeks, we've, we've had to respond. And I shared with them, if we would all respond the right way, great things are coming. I don't know when, but great things are coming. And, uh, but we've got to believe in the process, and that's, that's winning one play at a time and winning one day at a time. And uh, that was my message at halftime. That was my message before the game is, is uh, we're going to stick to the process, and, and we're just, we're just going to focus on winning one play at a time. And um, that's been our, 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 uh, our process and part of our culture. Um, I'm extremely proud of our, our staff. <clears throat> These guys have, have worked exceptionally hard over the last 19 games in, in almost 24 months that we've been here. Um, and, and we kept, you know, I, I keep saying that, look, something's going to go our way at some point. We've got to keep believing, and we've got to keep holding our players accountable. And, um, and, and to see the results come out tonight in, in, in an opponent um, that we just faced was, was remarkable. I'm extremely proud of where we are and where this program is going. Uh, we've been getting better over the last few weeks. I, I have seen that in some areas. Um, and we just needed something to go our way. And uh, we, we, we were able to, to create some opportunities tonight, and that was, that was big. So with that, uh, uh, there's a great atmosphere going on in that locker room right now. Over 300 and something recruits here. Uh, a great atmosphere here in Ford Stadium tonight, one of many. And um, it is. It's a process, and it's, uh, we'll come back to work tomorrow and get ready for our next opponent. But we're going to turn the city red tonight. Coach, can you talk about Jarvis Pruitt and how he played tonight? You know, um, Jarvis Pruitt probably played his best ball game that I've seen him a part of. He has been uh, uh, extremely dedicated and focused on, on, on the process and, and, and living out the last 40-something days of his senior year. Um, he sat in a senior meeting. He sat right over there in a senior meeting and, uh, in front of our entire seniors. And he said, we don't have to do anything special. we got to go play. And I, I think that that's what he did tonight. And I think his, his play was plenty. He, he, he didn't have to talk. And uh, I think his play, as well as all our players' play, uh, spoke, spoke uh, very, very loud. Proud of Jarvis. I think he had three sacks tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, uh, man, they, 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 he, played, he played well, as, as all of them did, a lot of them. Second straight week, your offensive line hasn't allowed a sack. How much of that is still left over from the response uh, from the Temple game? Well, I think a lot of it is. I, I really do. I, I think that those guys were challenged pretty hard. By uh, and they, they saw the results up on. And, and, you know, they had to had to see the results in front of their whole team. The team had to see that. They had to watch clips of, of, of some of the effort that we gave at Temple, and uh, and that was that was uh, something that. Uh, uh, I wanted to I wanted to pinpoint out and show, and that uh, that this is unacceptable in this program. We're not going that direction in this program, and, uh, and they've responded for two weeks. Coach Fry, Coach Sorrells has done a great job getting those guys ready. And I, again, I'm gonna commend our staff, Van Malone and our defensive staff, Joe Craddock, our offensive staff, Derek Riley, and the Keith Gunn and our special teams. Um, um, it, it was it was really was a collective effort, and 
And more importantly, it's those players that believed in what we're doing. And, and this is, you know, when you talk about a program where we have been 23 months ago and where we are right now, we're trending and we're in the right direction. Chad, talk about the, uh, the defense tonight and to be able to hold uh, Houston down to 300 yards to be able to control Ward and to sack him seven times. Just how big was the defense? <clears throat> well, I, I, it, obviously, it was huge. Um, outside of one drive, uh, and, and you know they really didn't have much. You know they they, they capitalized off of a fumble that we, we gave them, and um, but um, you know we knew how explosive they were. Uh, we knew that the the, the the talent that surrounds Greg, and, and you know he's playing as well as anybody in the country, um, and um, they had one of the best third down offenses of anybody in the country, and so uh, we knew that we felt like coming in we weren't gonna. We weren't going to stop him. We just hoped to contain him and keep him within the pocket and not let him get free and, and just get something something cheap off of us. And uh, uh, I thought that Coach Malone and, and uh, his staff did a great job putting things together to, uh, to, to, really, to really emphasize the fact that, look, if, if someone's going to beat us, let's make sure it's not him. And uh, we tried to, we did a good job of mixing up the reads uh, and, and not letting him just have the same read over and over again. Um, again, that one drive, they were able to convert three or two or three third and longs, um, and it was him seeing it. And, and that's what great quarterbacks do. So um, I, I thought I, huge about our defense to come up tonight. I don't know how many turnovers we had tonight, but um, it was it was huge for those guys to come up and, and to create some turnovers, especially early in the game. We were able to capitalize off of it, but uh, defensively playing aggressive. Our defense has played well all year long, though. And uh, this is something that was um, – um, you know, again, doesn't surprise me how well these guys are getting better. Um, and uh, but uh, it was it was uh, it, it was a war. It was a fight. We knew it was going to be a fight. Coach, uh, second week in a row, Ben Hicks doesn't throw an interception. Looked really poised behind the line tonight. Is there anything that you said to him before the game, or we're doing him with him this week? Um, how how's comment on how he's growing? <clears throat> well, you know, again, when you start looking back, his first game was against Baylor. You know, and, and uh, to watch him mature and, and just force some balls along the way. And, um, you know, our, our, our message to him was, look, just you, you don't have to go win the game. Just just go control it. Go and get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Um, get your protections right. That was the number one key that we shared with him. Coach Craddock's done a great job with him. Um, and that was, uh, you know, giving him some confidence. Ben actually against the Temple, taking all the hits that he took, probably played one of his better games at that point in time in the season. Then he played better against Tulsa and obviously tonight. Um, I thought that the, the, the pass that he stood in there on right there, right before half, and took a hit and, and got it to James Prochet, I thought that was, you know, again, it just gave us such a big lift going into halftime. So, yes, sir. You've only been here 23 months, but I wondered if when you're out there in the middle of the field at the end of the game and a lot of longtime fans were out there, I wonder if you got a sense of sort of the history. I believe it's 1983 was the last time you guys beat a top 11 program. Is that what it was, 1983? I, I didn't know that, and Brad told me that. Uh, uh, I, I do know this. Um, after the game, um, and to see our student body and our former players um, and some of the, the alumni out there, um, I, I don't know how long I stayed out there taking pictures with them, um, but the thank yous. That, that you know, coach, we, we thank you. This is we've been waiting on something like this to get this, give us life back in this program. And, and um, you know, they were they were so close a few years ago, and, and it just it went down from there. And, um, and th th this win is is uh, one. It's just one, and we've got we got five more, five more games ahead. But this is a big one because we needed this one. This is one that puts wind in your sails. This one gives you direction. Um, this one uh, you know, creates a belief. Uh, this one allows your fan base to understand that there, there are great things coming. We've been close. We've been really close against some really good teams. And, um, but to see them, and, and matter of fact, several of, of, uh, of the former players were in the locker room and uh, they played here a long, long time ago, and just, just uh, all they could say is thank you. That this, is, this is special. Was there any discussion this week about Coach Herman's? 
you know, the private school up? Well, I, I'll just say this. We, we're, we're extremely excited about, about where this program is going, and um, these guys deserve this, this win, and it doesn't shock. It, do, it might shock everybody else, but it doesn't shock me. So, okay. Now, we've, seen, now we've seen this team play well against some pretty good teams for 30 minutes. What was the difference tonight that allowed the, the team to finish for the whole season? Well, I, I just think that it was, it was the mentality of, of believing in our process. You know, there's so many times that you, you see people start playing and, and reacting out of emotion, and the moment emotion kicks in, you lose control. And so our focus is, was, was literally on just, just don't count the seconds, just win the play. You know, don't, don't, don't worry about the drive, just, just focus on the one play. And, and that, that literally was our message to our guys is that, look, there's a lot of ball that's got to be played the second half. And we've got to play every snap of it. And um, we can't look at the scoreboard. Uh, there was nothing less important than the scored half. And for us to be able to, to come out with that one play, one play warrior mentality that we so much talk about around our program and, and it's so much about our culture. A couple of weeks ago, you guys were pretty tough on them in, in meeting, uh, meetings after the Temple loss and last uh, after Tulsa. Just you know, since then, since you challenged him to respond after those last three games, what kind of difference has he noticed? Are you talking about with our, with our who? With our uh, O-line? Or just with the, the whole, the whole team? Uh, just differences in you know, preparation or anything else. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, and, and I, I just said, look, that, you know, for us to get to where we want to be in our program, it, it's, 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 it truly is, and I keep saying this, but it, it was a one day at a, at a time mentality. And, and you know, <clears throat> the performance we put on the field against Temple, we got to give Temple credit now. They, they played well. Their, their program, they're, they're, they were at a two and two in their season. They were at a pivotal point in time, four years into, into Coach Rule's program. And, um, and, and so you could sense their maturity level was a whole lot stronger than ours. And uh, so coming back off of that one, the challenge was, is that, look, if this is the way this thing's going to go the, next, the, the rest of this season, then, then don't expect any different results. We're going to have to, we're going to have to do something about it. And there's only one group that can do something about it, and that's us. And we, we use the E plus R equals O all the time. The events plus the response equals the outcome. Well, you can't control the event. You can't control the outcome, but you can control how you respond to things. And that was our message all week long is how are we going to respond after losing a temple, losing a heartbreaker to Tulsa. And, um, and, and because if we all respond the right way, great things are going to happen. I don't know when we were going to get the results that we need. I don't know when the outcome was going to go in our favor. But I do know this, and, and I've won my whole life. And, and we got winners in that program, in our program, and winners in that locker room and in that staff room. And if you stay with something long enough, you're going to win at it. you got to believe in the process. And, uh, and that's what this program is. We're building something from the, literally the ground floor and changing a complete culture of SMU football at SMU and across the state and across the country. That's what we're doing, and you're doing it. You, it's, it's, it wasn't a quick fix. It's not a quick fix. And, and this is just one win, but it's a big one. And we're going to build on this one, and uh, we're going to get back in here, and we're going to go to work tomorrow. And uh, there will be challenges. We gotta, there were some things that we did wrong last night, but, uh, but these guys deserve it. We're going to celebrate tonight. And uh, like I said, we're going we're gonna to turn the city red, and we're going to have a great time with it tonight. And when we get back in here tomorrow, we'll regroup, and we'll figure out who we play next. Coach, another good game from Zelta Minor. What have you seen from this year that's been so different from the past? You year? know, a fifth-year senior that uh, I, I probably challenged him as hard as I did anybody. Buddy Wyatt did a great job and has done a great job from that defensive line of, um, you know, he was going into his fifth year, and, and, and I, I just asked him, I said, Zelta, you're a highly recruited guy. What have you done since you've been here? And, and there was really not a big response. And so I said, well, you, you have an opportunity to leave a legacy here. And you, you got your whole senior year. And, and, and I'm extremely proud of Zell Minor because he's playing really well. He's playing as consistent a football as anybody I got. So it's great to see that out of him. And, uh, and that's what you expect as he, as he takes on these younger guys, the Demick Garys, and, and shows them this is, this is what we do. Here as well, what about getting that from Demerick Gary as like a freshman and to come yeah. on in a game like this? Well, we've got some great freshmen. 
90% of our production is from freshmen right now, freshmen and sophomores. And, uh, but we are getting some quality leadership out of our veteran guys, Darren Malines, Zelt Miner, Jarvis Pruitt. Um, and so that's a, that, that's a big horse. Richardson's another one. Um, but you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing a group of guys come together. You're seeing a program take its next step. That's what you're seeing. You mentioned the huge crowd of recruits you had tonight. What was your message to them after the game? Well, I shared with them when I got them in here before the game. And I talked about what we're building. And I told them, I said, you're going to see a phenomenal effort tonight on this field. And um, I, I, I promised them that, uh, that this will be a, a, a night that they won't forget. That was the way I left it. With the recent talks of the Big 12 expanding, Houston was on the number one for a lot of people's lists. Was that used for motivations, or do you think some of the no. players? I, I really know. That, that's really out of my control. I, I'm worried about my players. And, and the SMU football program and where we're going. And, and uh, um, that, that's the, we focused on, the, on, on how we were going to respond and, and, and believing in our culture and, and uh, taking it one day at a time. And that's, uh, but no, that, that, was, that was absolutely no talk in this room. You've talked so much this year about the last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the second half. After Houston scored, were you initially planning to sort of run out the clock before Braden ripped off that 40-yard run? Yeah. And then when he did and you ended up scoring, how big did that end up being in the outcome tonight? Yeah, I told Coach Craddock, I said, look, let's run it on first down and second down. Let's see, see where we are. And uh, if we get a first down, then we may take a shot. Obviously, second down, we hit a big, long run, and then it was then, – then we, we knew what we were going to call at that point. We were, we were ready. It was one of our shots, our landmark shots at that point. So, but yeah, that was – the intent was if we got stuffed on first and second, we were going to run it out. But second down, we picked up a big gain, and then we went up there. I thought it was a huge momentum change, especially going into halftime. We won that four over four moment, and, um, and we, we had talked about it on the sidelines. Coming out after half, the second four over four moment, uh, the first four minutes of the second half, they didn't score, we didn't score, so you know it would be a push at that point. But you know, so many games when you look at them are decided in that eight-minute time, and um, and when we win at least one part of it, it's uh, it, usually there's there's the, the game has a tendency to be really tight, or you you, you win. Them. So. Last question. Um, so Braden West was one of the guys that was most excited for this game, and he was a captain and everything. So. Why was Myron taking snaps for the game and not? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Braden West didn't work out any the last two weeks. Braden West had been hurt. And so I didn't really know if Braden was going to play. Braden was a game-time decision, and, um, and so uh, that was it. We had worked Myron in there running back for basically what well, he's been working there about the last couple of weeks, and so that was it. Okay, thanks.